Hey everybody, Chris Thunder Laser. I just wanted to um, talk about the new Thunderbolt and the new RF tube coming out with it. Now, we're all familiar with the CO2 and the wattage rate ratings. And there's kind of a, a buzz going around because the, the Thunderbolt is only 30 watts. Well, a little bit about an RF tube. Uh, the, the equivalent uh, potential or strength of, of this tube is very different than, than its counterpart of glass CO2 tubes. And a little quick explanation about it is it's three times, over three times, smaller of a beam than its counterpart uh, glass CO2. So the effective usage of this beam it being much finer makes it easier to pass through objects. Not only is the beam smaller, but it's denser, making it a um, much higher quality beam, uh, well-defined, and very, very suitable for precision cutting, for engraving, and all types of other applications where, where it requires a, a very thin, focused beam. Now, as you can see in the background here, uh, the cutting, this is my, we're still testing the bolt, so this is my 55 watt CO, CO2 RF Odin. It's a Thunder Odin. This is only 55 watts using a two inch lens, cutting through one inch acrylic, which is insane. Um, you know, I have 130 watt CO2 Nova series which can also cut through this uh, same material. And I'll tell you, the, the, the power point and also the speeds are very similar. Now, the reason why this is possible is because the RF tube does have that smaller beam size and the density of the beam is greater. So not only is the beam size and density of the RF tube better, but typically with a high quality laser beam, well-defined, um, you're gonna get higher precision cutting, higher precision engraving, and a very, very clean focused beam. That aside, uh, let's take into account that the, the lifespan of the RF tube is three times as much as its CO2 glass counterpart as well. These are tubes that you are going to send back to Thunder Laser to get refilled. Uh, you're not going to be buying a brand new tube. You'll send it off. Um, from what I understand, it's going to be about $500 plus shipping and handling to send it back. And then Thunder is going to send you a tube that has been recharged and plug it back in and, and away you go. Whereas with a glass tube, if you're above 80 watts on a glass tube, you're spending probably close to $800 to, to $1,400 to get, you know, 80 to 130 watt tube replaced. So there's a benefit there for the RF tube. So in comparison, again, um, I want to stress the fact that this, this RF tube on the Odin at 55 watts was using a two inch lens. And if you're familiar with most of uh, these lasers and, and cutting through thicker materials, we typically want a 2.5, a four inch lens to help carry that beam through the material. The fact that this 55 uh, cut through this one inch thick material with a two inch lens um, is pretty impressive. Uh, because I know the four inch lens on my, uh, my 130 watt did the same thing at relatively the same speed and power. And for some actual stats on that, the 130 watt Nova series with a four inch lens cut through that one inch using about 95% power at um, two millimeters per second. The 55 watt Odin was cutting at 0.5 millimeters per second, so quite a bit slower at 98% power. Uh, both of them using different lens, both two different types of sources of, of CO2 lasers, 
but you get the point, the 55 watt kept up with the 130, which is amazing. So with all that said, uh, we are gonna continue to test the bolt. We are going to see what we can push it to do. Uh, this way you know when you decide to order it, what it's capable of. Um, we are currently testing 10 millimeter acrylic, uh, 10 millimeter plywood, and we're able to get through it um, using a variety of lenses. But we will continue to test and we will provide updates and more information as we have it. Appreciate you. Have a good one.